There we are. Hello, Shep. What's up? I don't know. I'm just sitting over here glugging. <laughs> just what? what was that? I said I'm just sitting over here glugging away. Oh, glugging. Remember we had the conversation about the glugging? Stop it. 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 I don't know why there are no pictures. It doesn't oh, matter. The St. Francis Yakov of the came in there on the right. Hi, Odette. Hello, Noel. Hey. Hello, Hello. Commodore. Mrs. McNeil. Hi. Hey, Hello, Odette. Hello. 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 Myers are here. Ms. Here we are. Can you see us? No, he's here. Mr. Yep. Set Lance. Teresa, you need tech help, do you? Sure, he hasn't been. Here's Teresa. She is my tech support. That is true. She's really good at it. You kicked me out. Remember that? We talked to the second period. We're going to go like this. So you watch. I'm actually cooking dinner, so I'm going to let her watch and I'll listen. Can you see our picture? Yes. We do. Sure. <laughs> we see your picture. Roger, McNeil and Lance. Uh, Hi, McNeil. <laughs> I we can't, we can't yeah. see our picture. Yeah. Okay. We can't see our own picture, but you can. You can, huh? That's what counts. Yeah. 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 No, we can't see you, Grant. Grant, we can't. We cannot we see your picture. Am I supposed to? Open? What do we hear? You gotta turn on your video. Share screen. No. Am I supposed to open up a bottle of red or a bottle of white? White for me. <laughs> what are we doing, Jeff? Okay. I'm trying to get our picture on there. Well, that's all right. We don't need it. What do device are you working on, Jeff? There we go. Pardon? What device are you on? Oh, my um, iPad. No, my computer. My computer. Oh. Okay, I can't help you with that. Bye, Allison. You there? There she is. There's three minutes. No. Is anybody else here? Hmm. Switch to a better camera. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of talk about what we're gonna do tonight, and you know, there's a lot of. There you go. There's a lot of things as a chef that uh, kind of helps shape you as you go through your career. And I think one of the biggest things that got me into this business was eating my mother's cooking. As a kid, growing up, she was awesome. Uh, she cooked. Uh, even today, she can keep up with me, maybe not on some new trends, but just the overall tastes and flavors of things. So two of the things that I grew up eating, and this may sound, and it's, they're really simple, really easy, is a smoked meatloaf that I grew up eating. And it's very easy to make. And uh, the other item was, and I've done them here at the club, I've done them up at Tinsley, is uh, some basic white chicken enchiladas. You don't see them too often, if ever. And uh, I'm going to kind of walk you guys through those and um, kind of show you how they're made and kind of go from there. We've ran them here on Cinco de Mayo. People have asked for the recipe constantly. Um, they've called me about them a few times. Uh, but uh, so I know the members have uh, enjoyed them in the past. So um, believe it or not, I've got this recipe for the smoked meatloaf. It is from 19... 84 Halloween cookbook is what my mom was giving out. And uh, that's, that's, I've, I've got this thing. That's how old this recipe is. I cherish it. Um, it kind of stays close to me. It's one of those things that, uh, um, you know, just very dear to yourself. So um, you were you know, only five years old then, weren't you? I was only five years old. <laughs> so, you know, Noel was already hired here. <laughs> What, what, what year did you get hired here? 81. 81. 81. So, I mean, he, he was already an employee here. So, <laughs> but, uh, so 
yeah, I'm, I'm going to start off with that. It's very simple. I've got the recipe on my phone. I'm going to be kind of going back and forth from that. Uh, I want to direct. I am going to give this uh, uh, to the marketing committee, and uh, they're going to post it. And then uh, we'll kind of just enchiladas are really easy to make. And I know uh, Mr. O'Grady last time was talking about the mother sauces last time, and we're going to be making uh, a velouté for that enchilada sauce, and uh, just kind of. Uh, touching it up and doing some things with it. But uh, other than that, we're going to get started. And, uh, you know, this is really simple. So we're going to start over here. I have got some ground beef. I've got three pounds of ground beef. Just to kind of give you guys a... Uh, This is the recipe I follow off of. I don't know if everyone can see it. But, <laughs> but it's it's so old. It's on a piece of paper. It's on like a little notebook thing. And you know, it's got a little uh, Halloween thing on there. But uh, we can only do this with the mouse. So, so we're going to times this by two. And I've got three pounds of hamburger meat. I have tried this recipe <coughs> with multiple types of sausage. No sausage works better in this recipe than your regular Jimmy Dean breakfast sausage. I can't buy this through my purveyors, so I have to go to the store and shop for this stuff. Uh, they're little one pound chubs, just a plain regular pork sausage. But it is, it is very different and uh, unique flavor. People will use it for breakfast. They'll use it for whatever. But this stuff is the best stuff for this recipe for this meatloaf. We're going to uh, go ahead and cut these up. Kind of just squirt them in there real quick. Easy money. Okay, this will this will probably make you about two third pans, so it'll probably feed about if you times it by two, it'll probably feed about ten to twelve people if, if you're going for that much. Then we're gonna go into uh, chopped up celery. We got some onions and some two cloves of garlic in there. Also, I combined in them two cloves of garlic. <coughs> Onions. I use yellow onions for this, and uh, just regular basic celery. Then we are going with a cup and a cup and a half, a cup and three quarters of milk. Cup and three quarters of milk. Four eggs, and I like to whisk them up ahead of time. Mix them up in there really quick. And there's another, being a chef, sometimes you don't always have some of the ingredients, some even just some basic ingredients. And the recipe calls for a half package of crackers. I have tried just about every pack of crackers there is. And the saltine ones, Premium saltine crackers is the best for this recipe. I don't know why. I've, I've looked in, I've tried butter crackers, I've tried, you know, just breadcrumbs, whatever it may be. But these things work the best. It calls for a half. I doubled the recipe, so we're going to use the whole thing. And I just break them up right in the package, kind of crumble them up. Really easy. Kind of drop them right in there. Very home style. Then we've got uh, a, a teaspoon and a half of liquid smoke. Uh, 
That's about it right there. Then we got a cup. Two thirds of a cup of Worcestershire. There you go. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Sorry. Milk, eggs, celery, garlic, onion, sausage. And all we're going to do is just mix this up. I'm going to get a new glove on. I don't know if everyone can see what we're doing here, yep. but I also don't know if everyone can see my uh, raccoon eyes. <laughs> I went salmon fishing on Tuesday and we got skunked. <laughs> the only thing I caught was a sunburn. <laughs> and the only thing that was getting, there's a ton of pelicans out on that ocean, man. They were hitting the anchovies like there was no tomorrow. All right, so we're going to just mix this up. Keep mixing. Kind of run it through your fingers, squeezing it. The bread's going to help absorb all your liquid. Very easy. And then we are going to uh, cut the onion oil real quick. This is what I call a third pan. It's a third of the size of any full length uh, hotel pan. That's how, we, that's how we name and number them. We're just going to uh, plop them in here, pack them down. Really easy. Next thing I'm going to do, favorite barbecue sauce. Whatever you want. We make our own here. It's a little sweet. It's more of a, uh, I guess, a uh, Midwest barbecue sauce. A little dark. We're just going to brush this right on top. You can use whatever kind of barbecue sauce you like. We're going to cover it in foil, and we're going to bake it at 350 for about 45 minutes to an hour. But the most important thing is, is you got to reach an internal temperature of a minimum of 106 degrees. I'm sure everybody's got thermometers out there now, now that all this stuff's going on. <laughs> um, you know, you can, you can kind of tempt things, but just a regular food thermometer. 106 degrees is what you're looking for. I'm going to cover these in foil and throw them in my back oven, and I got a couple more. They might be ready, but if not, we'll run into the chicken enchiladas real quick.
Well, while we're waiting for Chef, I guess you guys heard some good news that we're all we're going to be opening back again for limited outdoor dining, and hopefully, you can all uh, join us. And uh, uh, starting Friday, June nineteenth, we will be uh, offering outdoor dining. It'll be on the race deck. We'll have tables all over the race deck, six feet apart at least, and some tables around the balcony and the clippership outside balcony. We're gonna have some of our staff back, uh, front desk, um, Odette, Anna will be back. And uh, so we're, we're looking forward to our opening again. <laughs> and uh, the chef's gonna have a limited menu. We're gonna practice all the uh, social distancing and safety guidance that the city has uh, come up with. We're still waiting for that official uh, uh, guidance. Uh, but anyway, I hope to uh, see you all. Reservations will be required uh, because we are limiting, because there's a limited number of tables, we are limiting uh, the uh, reservation. We got right. a new menu also. So if everybody's been here during all these cooking shows, there, uh, the burrata salad that we put out with the uh, with the basil vinaigrette, uh, one of the lunch shows, that that made it on the menu. Of course, we kept some of the uh, popular items, the patrolli and all those, the salmon and you know some ahi tuna tartare. But we we changed up some things, new salads. Uh, we got an akushi burger, which is a uh, Japanese uh, uh, meat. And uh, with some boars in and, you know, just some, it's, it's really delicious. I've been kind of playing with some things during this whole time and cleaning the kitchen and, you know, doing all these things. And I've even, I've even uh, been the front desk. I've been answering phones on the front desk too. So they've been, they keep me busy. So, you know, I was, I was telling Noel, we had a story here. Should I tell him it? So last Monday, or no, it was last Saturday. The, uh, all the protests were going on. And so I'm looking, I see the Golden Gate all backed up and you know, what, whatever. And all of a sudden I look outside and I'm at the front desk and there's probably 14 paddy wagons full of police officers, minivans, Jettas, domestic cars, everything. So they're all, they're all wanting to, uh, use the, uh, uh, the bathroom. So I'm letting them in and out of here and they're leaving, coming back, leaving, coming out. This lady pulls up. And she's asking, she, she's a member here. And she says, oh, who are you? Or is the club open? I said, no, I'm the chef here. Just letting the police. And they go like, oh, you're the chef here. Good, because we needed a new one. <laughs> I kind of laughed at her. You know? <laughs> I wanted to drop some F-bombs, but I, uh, I knew I shouldn't. So. <laughs> but anyways. So, you tell her you've been here for five years? I, I didn't tell her anything, you know. <laughs> oh, but anyway, so we're going to get into the chicken enchiladas. Right on. So the first thing we did was we boiled the chickens, okay, until uh, they were cooked, chilled them. We had the stock that was left over from the, uh, the uh, chicken, and uh, we thickened it up with some roux, added some sour cream. All right, and you want this sauce to be really white, all right? And I'll give you a look at it. This is how white it is. This is a white enchilada sauce. And we put in some diced green chilies. Diced green chilies, you can roast them off and dice them yourself. Uh, or I like to buy the ones, they're very basic that you can find at the grocery store, is the Ortega green chilies. They work the best. I know there's some other, again, I've tried, I've tried uh, different um, green chilies also, but the, the Ortega green chilies work the best. And again, they got the best flavor. Their juice <laughs> that you're putting in there also adds some good, good flavor. The other ones tend to get like a metallic taste to it. So that's part of the main reason why I like the, uh, the Ortega chilies. So all we did was thicken up, uh, the stock with some roux, added some sour cream and some green chilies. Uh, sour cream's important for a little bit of acid. 
um, and flavor of this sauce. Okay. It does good. But really good, really good. So then the next thing you do, I don't know if anybody's ever made enchiladas, but the best <laughs> way, I, I use the yellow corn for this recipe. I, I don't use yellow corn for chips. I use the white corn and all that, but uh, yellow corn is the best way. And all we do is we uh, come over and fry them no more than, no more than three, four seconds on these things. You just want to soften them up. That's all you want to do with them. Okay. Soften them up. Tamales. Create as much grease on as you can. <laughs> Tamales. Oh, oil. Okay. Look at how bad I named that. Put that back up here. We're going to bring these back over here. They're a little pliable. We've got some onions. Specifically, jack cheese. And here's our roasted chicken or our boiled chicken that we we had. I'm just rolling those things up, putting them in here to a pan that we've already uh, got going. Do one or two more. Enchiladas are real easy to make. What makes it is the sauce, in my opinion. Stuffing them in there. I'm going to throw some more chicken in there on top. Some more jack cheese. Any leftover onions I got. And before I put all these in there, I don't want these sticking to the bottom of the pan. So I ended up putting sauce on here beforehand. Okay. And then we're going to sauce it again. Now, when I make these at the club, I have to tell you, we have some Latin uh, employees here, and they give me a hard time, and they call these white boy enchiladas because they're white. <laughs> so they, they think it's funny. They love them. They love them. They think, and they've never had white enchiladas before either. They call it gringo. <laughs> gringo, you can call them. You know. So all I'm going to do is uh, wrap these up in foil, and I've got I've got another one in the oven. My beeper's going off for the meatloaf. We'll we'll plate up. Anybody's got any questions? We can kind of just kind of go from there. Well, we'll follow you. Hips. Now, if you guys got these kind of ovens in your house, you're doing pretty good. These are combi <laughs> ovens. They work amazing. They steam, they'll steam and roast, and they'll roast for you. We got thermometers in them. What I do is all you got to do is just stick a thermometer in and set the time on what you want, and it, it comes out exactly when it gets to that tent. So, you know, these are a little high tech. We put these in about two, three years ago, and, uh, I know the Monday night football crew sometimes has to come in and get a refresher every time uh, they, they got to do some things. And I know Doug Thorne's on here, so he knows all about uh, the, the Monday night football crew coming in and getting some lessons on how to work these ovens. So. They look really expensive, Chef. <laughs> <laughs> they look really expensive. I know how much they cost. <laughs> but they're worth it. How much were they? No, but I know how much they were. Oh, okay. They look expensive, so they're well worth it, though. Yeah, they self-clean themselves. We really? throw tablets in them. To set. I mean, these things are uh, these things are great. I have to get a child that does that too. So 
there's one of the meat loads we've got done. There's that one. And uh, amazingly, I've got a chicken enchilada <laughs> pulling out of the, uh, the oven. And again, this will be Noel's dinner tonight. So he's, got, he's got to eat all of it. <laughs> Depending on what type of ground beef you buy, there will be some shrinkage from fat. Can you use some of that dripping for gravy or anything? You can, yeah. You can use that for whatever. I top these off a little bit more cheese. Really low fat, really low fat. <laughs> Uh -huh. so then just for the enchiladas, we just take a Two chicken enchiladas. Nothing fancy, but really good in flavor. And then we got. Meatloaf sticks together. Some people have a hard time always uh, putting meatloaf and getting it to stay together. I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges with meatloaf. But uh, other than that, it's going to do some mashed potatoes with that. You could do some roasted vegetables, whatever you like. But uh, this stuff is just. I grew up on it. It is so good. It, the sausage, the uh, the liquid smoke with the meatloaf, and definitely the crackers are the biggest uh, deal breakers there. So, um, anybody have any questions? I'm going to have to come up with You're more. You're saying to cook the meat to 106 degrees, possibly 160? No, 160 degrees is what you want to cook the uh, meatloaf to. 160, 160. What kind of meat do you recommend? 90, 10, or 80, 20? What? I, I use, uh, this is 80, 20. But if you want lower fat, go 90, 10. Any, any meatloaf fans out there? Yes. Yeah. Is there a rule of thumb for a standard heat versus convection heat? Uh, we only use convection here. Uh, and what convection is, is a rotating heat. It usually has a fan on it of some sort. And, uh, you know, for a kitchen, you want that heat to be as hot as you can get it. And uh, usually when you have a convection heat, you're going to run a hotter oven versus a conventional with no uh, blower on there. So um, I would recommend getting a blower if you, if you have the opportunity or maybe you already have one. But uh, Convection heat is, is, the, is the way to go. So. Looks good, Chef. Can't wait to come over and have it. Oh, yeah. We'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>
we'll, we'll wrap some stuff for the go. go. Yeah. Off mute. Yes. Hey, uh, when do we get mom's mashed potatoes? <laughs> when do we get mom's mashed potatoes? Um, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt us. We'll be there. Hey, no Careful. problem. I'll be here too. Excellent. <laughs> Send me a text. I'll, I'll put some stuff to go. Okay. Excellent. It's actually going to be a staff meal tomorrow. So they'll, they'll have some chicken enchiladas and some meatloaf. And I like get to have it tonight. Yeah, Noel gets to have it tonight. <laughs> and we got some uh, pen folds uh, downstairs. So. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, you're gonna pair that with some grain, right? Same. <laughs> we'll have a couple. We'll have a couple gloves of penfolds. <laughs> <laughs> so, anybody have any questions? Uh, nope. Hey, chef. What's up? Uh, you must be something working down there almost by yourself. Uh, how many people do you have? In how many people we have working here? Yeah. In the kitchen? Yes. Yeah. Nobody, just me. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. You get to do it your way. <laughs> I always do it my way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, we're bringing some staff back starting next week. Um, you know, just, just doing lunches. So next Friday and, you know, the staff is eager to get back to work. Um, you know, they, they love this place and they, they love the membership and, you know, it's, uh, they've really expressed that during the times I've kept in touch, uh, touch with everybody and on a weekly basis. And, uh, you know, we've had some people, uh, accidentally microwave their check. And <laughs> I, I still don't know how that check ended up in the microwave. So I told them, I said, Hey. We talked about you trying to increase the amount of the check. You don't microwave it, you boil it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, this but, uh, place, this place has been and still is family. Yeah. And I, 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 have, I have never seen that more in my five years than the last two months I, I've, I've been here. Uh, from yeah. the up the phone at the front desk to seeing some members at the front door. I see Mrs. Bradner walking uh, uh, with her daughter. And I, I see members out here. You talk to them. Um, you know, they're just everybody cares. Yep. Know? So there's going to be some restrictions, and we're going to be Go wearing on. we're going to be wearing robber masks back here. You know those. Uh, those doctor ones, you can't oh. breathe in here in this kitchen. So we're going to no be way. wearing the gators. Um, we're going to be cleaning more than what we already were, you know. And uh, so we're excited. We're excited. And um, as you can see, so is Noel. <laughs> <laughs> so... Anybody got any questions about anything? Doesn't have to be food. Um, <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of wine do you pair with the meatloaf and the enchiladas? So enchiladas, we were talking earlier, and uh, we were thinking about doing uh, some sort of a tequila-based drink. If not, Ooh. and uh, with the meatloaf, I would go. I would go pure cabernet. You know. Yep. That's what yep. I'm saying. We got some pen folds downstairs. <laughs> I heard that. That's what made me think of it. So, do you? Are there any other? If someone doesn't eat beef, could they substitute any other meat? I know that kind of detracts from maybe the recipe. Oh, but the other thing that is going to be cut. It's not on the menu yet, but it is coming on the menu. Is we are going to put this recipe on the menu, but what we're going to be doing is using Beyond Meat. Oh, so. It's it's a it's a plant based uh, it's a plant based uh, meat. Uh, it's vegetarian, and if, if you still want that, that's what we're gonna do. Um, if you didn't want to use um, ground beef, I mean, 
The only other meat I would probably suggest is just doing turkey, you know, to do a lighter, to do a lighter base off that. So, so we well, sometimes use pork on our meat. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, when Commodore. You use, when you use Beyond Meat. Times and everything. What? I lost that. When you use Beyond Meat, what? When you use Beyond Meat, what do you do with Jimmy Dean? We just wouldn't put it in there. So it's all Beyond Meat. It would be all Beyond Meat, yes. And, and there, goes, there goes the sage and the whole flavoring that Jimmy Dean loads into the sausage. Yeah, yeah. The, the thing about the Beyond Meat, you can omit the eggs in it and the milk because it co cooks up as a loaf as is. Mm -hmm. We do the burger for the, the weight staff or for the membership. It, it's, it's like meatloaf already, you know? You're oh, yeah. Giving it some flavor, you know? Understood. We we'll have to call it eat loaf instead of meatloaf, or we call it meat love at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> meat loaf is uh, it's a good good name for it. So, Aaron, when can we bring guests? Um, you, I, I don't believe you can bring guests at all. You can only come in with your family. Yeah. That's it. Yep. You're not going to be able, and again, I'm not going to be out there checking ideas, IDs to see who's related to who. Um, <laughs> that's going to be Noel's job. <laughs> yeah, but he knows. <laughs> that's probably why he's he's out there. But yeah, it is family members only. No guests outside your family. It's just member. I believe it's just members only, right? Members and same household. Member, member and same household. Yes. Oh. Well, that nice. will see too many ten. Nice job. That was a beautiful, a beautiful uh, uh, cooking experience. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Uh, very simple. Very simple. Again, it's not. You're you're not looking at, you know, Thomas Kelly food right here. Um, that was a couple other classes ago, you know, but uh, <laughs> very basic stuff, you know, very basic. And, and you'd be surprised out there how many people cannot cook, you know, <laughs> I, 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 you know, and, and, you know, I hate, <laughs> one of them. Oh, one of them. <laughs> I hate being that person that goes over to that person's house that can't cook because then they look at me. And it's a chef that's coming in, and then you don't eat, and uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. And you can I, see I that it. it really hurts their feeling. <laughs> and I, I, it's just, a, but I can't do it. You know, if it's horrible, I'm going to say it's horrible. You know. Tell him we hope he doesn't. The members, do it, the members do it to me. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Not all the time. Not all the time. I'm just joking. Hopefully not all the time. Nice job, chef. So. But uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody when they come back and, you know, dress warm because you're going to be outside on the breezeway. Or not the breezeway, the, uh, the race, race deck. deck. Race yeah. deck, yeah. So. So, so now you're a media star, right? I, I wouldn't call <laughs> I it hope this is, I hope this isn't one of those series that's going to immediately end because, very frankly, even in normal operations, I believe we ought to do this once a month. Yeah, that, that's definitely something we can do, you know. I'd be more than willing to come in on a Tuesday, and, you know, we're going to be dark on Monday and Tuesdays here. Yeah. It's definitely something that uh, can be done, and, uh, you know, we can have even more fun with it. I can, you know, put, put the whole kitchen in action and uh, kind of walk from station to station showing things and get a lot of about three, four, five, six items done. You know, yep. you can see yep. what it's really like in the kitchen as an experience. It would be fun to see the Monday night crew in there with you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Not doing well, that, I know. Okay. <laughs> um, but there used to be a cooking show back in the 90s, early 90s, and this lady was the commentator, and she would go into the hotels and into the restaurants, and the chefs would be in there with their – with their crew making stuff and uh, it, it was awesome and then it was like on pbs 
Mm-hmm. And uh, re- really great show. They, they yeah. stopped because Food Network took over, and now, everybody, now everybody's a chef. <laughs> So, other than that, it's it's great seeing everybody. And uh, you know, Noel, you got any you got anything you want to add? I'm good. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you starting the 19th. We are too. Definitely. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Thank right. you so much. All right. So we'll post that meatloaf recipe with the uh, with the. Yeah, with That's the enchiladas right. and the, uh, the I'll, I'll, I'll even see if I can't get it on the original paper, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, hey. Great. You sent us a menu, Aaron? Yeah. What's that? That's great. As they say, we'll see you at the club. See you at the club. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Chef. Thanks. Thank you, Chef. We'll see you at the club. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. I know Al. Take care. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Happy Father's Day if I don't see anybody either. <laughs>